Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. Massa propaganda heroes like Defender of the Fatherland. Off here to an exciting one versus one on Holot. If I remember, winter between the West, we got Brussels fighting for the Soviet Union. Socialism. Stalin taking on the role here of the third tank corps versus the East. We got Tiramisu fighting here for the Wehrmacht. Germany. Deutschland. Rolling out for the 7th Panzer Division, and we've got here Lightning War, Mobile Defense, and German Mechanized, Triple Infantry versus Shark Rifle, Counter Attack, and Soda Serve Army, and Triple Infantry for Brossas. Nothing but he's got bulletins for increased conscript training, so he can basically push out this conscript just a tad faster than his opponent can push out infantry, well, even faster than that. But we got Gunner the MD4 2 start here for Tiramisu, Pioneer sitting southward, there for the Wehrmacht to the German Army. And you through this sort of slouching ahead. So nope, by the way, he's going to go for a capping altar that sort of just emphasizes getting the fuel first and then securing the car front first. It's a slightly more efficient capping altar view. All. And they'll go, in fact, just further wiring off here to make it half the opponent's harass. I mean, so pretty good stuff. They're going to lose following up. We got the country going northwards, centerwards, them in Guinea, and southwards here for Brostras. And the Red Army. Ah, he got a bit too caught up here in wiring off even this haystack. I think that might have been going a bit too far there. Though, of course, it's going to make it harder the overall for the opponent to defend the point if they ever harass it. Gonna do there setting out. Quickly popping into the house in case Brussels is making for a quick thrust here through the center towards the car point. In fact, he's got the MD42 carrying in that area. And, of course, it also allows him to the spot. Can he actually move the MD42 safely to safe for some down here? And in this case, Brussels is actually switching out fast, which prevents an otherwise quick move setting up the MD42 there, which is actually a bit rare to see a Soviet player going so aggressively towards the south. Though we can see a team who sees what's going on there. But looks like the engineers spotted. They got not soon enough. The MG4 suppresses and forces back there. But also us engineers. Grenadiers seem to be remaining in the church here, basically acting as a blocking unit and as a sort of trip wire, alerting to the missile trying to push around the calf point as everything else is going on there. Grenadiers are going to grab the southern point here. Can't get this going to a bit exposed here. They can't all stay in cover and they quickly fall back here. But also, is not feeling that's actually worth uh, risking uh, conscripts on. <laughs> Sandbox here intimidated by Brosas, cancels it though because he was not satisfied with it. Pioneers laying down Sandbox, and before to to grab the munition, continue to secure territory in the south here. More grenadiers on the way there for Tiramisu and the 7th Panzer is shown as Brosas and the 3rd Tank Corps continues to churn out the conscripts and dig up the sandbags. So, well, dirt piles with a few sandbags and some wooden blocks attached to it. So there you go, more Gunnadis. got three Gunnadis squads and one MD4 to take on for conscripts. More sandbags here to help defend the southern point. Gunnadis moving in here, conscripts hanging about here for Brothras. We have no upgrades yet for them, no field infirmary either. He's basically, I think, at this point, just sort of locking down here to the Misa and trying to sort of figure out where ways the Misa are going to come from and then attacking through there. But there you go. Actually, looks like not quite. He's going to attack here for the center. Gunnadis continue to occupy here. He's clearly worried about an attack from the north, going to try and push through here. So he's clearly trying to. Ward off against that. He might want to consider another MD42 or maybe a mortar to help sort of push against the Brussels here more effectively. Can't something about that, gonna need to be careful. And there you go, as soon as he moves in here, Brossas rushes in there, sneaks behind, gets into the house. They're ca sandwiching the Gunnadis in a slightly more quick position. There you go, we got saying MD42 on the way here for Tiramisu. It's the country there being held up by the MD42. Gunnadis falling back here. As all of a sudden, he's being caught in a really, really, really bad spot. The only Gunnadis moving northwards, but that leaves the area around here actually now quite exposed. Uh, meaning Tiramisu might just have made a misstep. But then, in fact, the Gunnadis being gunned down. They actually need to retreat too. And the MD42 is also being forced back. And there you go, country pushing in this setting. It's a complete disaster here for Tiramisu in the early game. Country there, trying to, try to catch him off. Come there, goes back to bait them into the MD42. The Gunnadis still are looking to be wiped here. Tiramisu there while caught the country squad suffered a huge loss here in the early game. Second MD4 to run, we need to get the Gunnadis down and there you go, rushing in there. I'm not entirely sure what took uh, Tiramisu so long there to get the Gunnadis back down and to help defend or maybe do some more damage and again resulting in losing the entire squad of conscripts. Oh, Gunnadis, not conscripts, he did not get a single squad there. So this is some pretty intense fighting here in the first few minutes of the game here. Second MD4 to he might be able to get the Gunnadis though. Mobile defense he chose, but there we go, got a wipe. Small victory there, Constant going for the fuel point there, Gunnadis moving down, MV42 retreating, Pioneers with a Flammenwerf up. More Gunnadis to replace it for Brussels, otherwise he can't take up at all. Shots fired there at the Conscripts, taking down Paul Dimitri. As the rest fall back, they're leaving him behind, well, pretty dead already. Did we check to see if he was alive? He's dead either way, so we don't have to. MV4 setting up there. 
but so far pretty rough start here for Tierney so partly of his own device though of course also just due to the sheer power of going for a lot of conscripts you really should not underestimate the power of a good Thor conscript build to start as it can be quite effective as the Wehrmacht as they struggle to deal with the sheer flexibility and mobility of it and it's certainly not going to get any more manageable once the conscripts get buffed Mort on the way there for Brosas is going to further put some pressure on the team. So of course, the additional MD42 should help a bit. We got Tech out there. That's definitely the right decision to make. He's going to need something with a bit more presence to take on Brosas's men and pressure him a bit more. Consequence is going to do so. Close to the Molotovs and there go forced away. Going to do some retreating. MD4 turning southwards. It's all on shifting up here. Mobile defense by the way, of course. I already mentioned that. But uh, Brosas is yet to go for Doctrine. He could, of course, in theory, try and push out some Austin. So at some point, that try and gain back map. Presence versus opponent. But I do think you should consider some mines here and there. Tiller mines, S mines, whatever mines you can sort of manage. Mines being laid down here by Brosselas. Good work. Very good work. But there's a conscript here build. You should definitely consider some Panzer gonna deal as they tend to be sort of one of the uh, better long term counters to them as they can sort of do a lot of damage. The concepts don't fight versus them particularly efficiently so a few well handled panzer grenadiers could do a lot of damage to Brosas and of course gain naturally fast overall allowing to just quickly build up there towards the concept begins sort of pushing them back more aggressively across the map. So I definitely think that should be a uh, priority there for Tiramiso. Maybe follow up with a half tech from mobility with going units. Oh caught by the MD42. Problem is even suppressed the flame for does not lose accuracy since it's an AOE weapon so he doesn't particularly care about being suppressed, which is a very important thing to keep in mind. So once more the car form this, exposed to need to move in troops, force whenever they can to so just stop that rush. MD42 also needs to get back there maybe. But also so far continue to maintain aggressive pressure here versus Tiramisu. Troops sealing soon enough, medic banker there on the way. Smoke stream down here just in case Tiramisu had an MD42. Very nice tactical coach. There you go, MD42 holding the country score here. Dunning them down there, negative cover, doing a lot of damage. Pioneers ready, we got a 2 to 2 on the way. I mean, that's certainly a faster option if we're dealing with the conscripts. If they don't get into tank grenades, of course, it can also, you know, apply a pressure a lot more aggressively against them. Though, a Panzer going to the escort, I think, really should be after that. A priority here, maybe also consider a half tech support. to maintain field presence better versus all of Brosas' conscripts. And he really sort of just push every advantage you can get here. More Sam X down for Brosas here to make it harder for Tinamisa to get back the field point. Pioneers are dealing with engineers, but the Pioneers themselves are close to getting wiped out. Unfortunately, there we go, we got the 2 2 out here for Tiramisu and the 7th Panzer de Shawn. 2 is back there for healing reinforcement. Comes with the heavy cover, obviously, he doesn't know the anti tank. In fact, Brosas, he tried to bait him into thinking he got it, but ultimately, he breaks his character. And there you go, Tiramisu here going for Ostrom. He just wants some rapid field presence. In this case, chooses to inflate it with Ostrobin. I mean, if you can get them into a good defensive position, they can sort of hold up. The problem is they're not very good at attacking, in particular, sort of uh, without any vetsimcy. And currently, the issue is Tiramisu is going to really need to attack. So the Ostrom here might find themselves falling aggressively short against a Brosa's heavy conscript build. I mean, it might not necessarily happen, but it seems uh, very highly likely. And of course, the argument could maybe should have gone for a Panzer Grenadier Squad, since again, they can just handle the conscripts better in more circumstances. Meanwhile, Brosos there taking up, taking advantage of the lead he's got. Austral maps kill as much territory as possible. Using counter attack tactics at some point would help him just seize a lot of that territory, which would definitely not be a bad idea. Are there any anti tank grenades here? Nope. Brosas is basically just banking to be able to get out of T7 fast enough so he doesn't have to worry about them. Of course, the thing is, Tidemiso is not going to risk it, like, unless he somehow by accident discovers a pun doesn't land to tank grenades, so while well, he's retreating there. I mean, he's not going to risk it. So, obviously, in that regard, Brosas, to an extent, is reasonably safe. Got a T7 on the way there. Tidemiso has got no counters for that, though, of course, he could go for a Puma here. But the meanwhile, awesome going territory. Counter attack tactics would be good. Advancing aggressively, this is good. I mean, as soon as you do have your opponent's lines pierced, you try to push your head, and this is important. Really important, particularly seeing how little territory the enemies have had throughout this fight so far. We'll have to see how this works out. More pioneers on the way there for Tiramiso, not a bad choice. He might want to push the gun to further north or around here, but of course, he wants to be ready in case of a counter attack, so he's always be able to deal with him there slightly. 
pushing through the south, and before slightly opening up, somehow shooting through the trees. And then before two to two dealing with troops in the center, we got a mortar nearby as well to bombard. He's gonna have to fall back from there. Pioneers continue northwards. Also remaining south as leads to the screen off the fuel point from any southern pressure. I'm just gonna try and think push here for the mortar. We got the teaser on the way up north here, and the leads pushing back the engineers. Almost got the munitions there. I mean he's finally got some uh, action going but the problem is now there's a T-Sound on the way and he's only got a 2 to 2 to stop but the problem is to really stop a T-70 you're going to need at least two 2 to 2s or pack 40 and a 2 to 2 or something else a single 2 to 2 you're going to have to be extremely lucky and really be hoping your opponent is not very good at using his T-70 to really have a chance there we do have anti tank grenades up now but no molotovs they also may actually have the chance versus the conscripts and there you go hold here with the Ostrom MD-402 in the south Actually, at least Alarm to sort of gain the advantage then, sort of push through, gain the southern half, even though he's risking a lot here up northwards, but he's even there making progress. Either way, though, what's important for Tiramisu is he's actually beginning to extend his front line somewhat. Of course, he also has to hold it, but at least so he denies his opponent's resources and so on, and that's a start, and of course, gain more himself. Oh, looks like a demo charge was set off, they'd mine. Oh, probably a man actually, there's not enough deep crater there still. Nice work there by Tiramisu. Troops to reinforce him, got the pack falling away there. Apparently, no attempted a puma for Tiramisu. Or is he probably just. Well, there's still some time for him to get the puma out anyway, so pack 40 onto them. But even then, he might then consider something else and then go for the puma. While he then could, for example, go for a panzer and just go hit the infantry, then hit with a puma and push back his opponent. Even then, he could go for a puma after the pack 40. Also, main Norfolk troops are being pushed back by the Indy 42 and the 222. Like to punch a Spearwagen. Also, I think, consider pressuring Norfolk's here and there. An option for Tidemus to actually consider might be trenches, actually. I mean, there's obviously the uh, threat of Molotovs here, but at the same time, maybe in the right place, an entrenched machine gun on Ostrom Scott could perhaps work out a bit there for Tidemus, so I don't know. Mortar there is definitely proving to be a nuisance. A counter mortar is also an option, by the way. Counter mortar is very much an option there for uh, Tina Musa. You can see he's actually destroying the sandbags. You rarely see that, but because it's really critical for the Ostrom, sort of holding certain critical points, he's just actually destroying the sandbags to ensure that Tina Musa's Ostrom got nowhere near to hide. So that's actually uh, pretty interesting to see there. Sam makes himself being ducked down instead. In a better position for him. Also, I'm doing it with the camera with the T70 bearing in like a, well, T70. There's no chance of uh, holding the line there. Retreat! But the Germans said they'd shoot us. Well, these are going to shoot us harder. Maybe the Germans will miss. And before to being shifted down, they need to get the pack 40 somehow down. Meanwhile, he's pushing forward for the Ostrom. Not really good assault infantry again. This is kind of where you want Panzer going to deal it. MG42 in the north. You can see again though, Tidemisu is trying to sort of push aggressively this again, trying to you know, force his opponent onto the defensive, which is again risky as the Wehrmacht, really risky, but you kind of have to play the Wehrmacht like that. That's sort of the situation with the Wehrmacht at the moment. They might in, on paper be a late game faction, but you have to play it like an early game faction. He could consider taking out now, could also consider of course going for the Puma now, trying to press his opponent's T70, so they will just get more firepower on the field now. We'll have to see here what Tidemus ends up with, but harassing his opponent's field point, good idea. In the south here, trying to push through, he's using his opponent's Sandex against him to help defend the field point there, good work by Tidemisu, fixing up the 2-2, two two. fire there on the pack 40, this is his 3 bombarding, he's going to lose that pack 40 though, ah oh dear. Also moving in, MD42 moving up there. <laughs> Got the northern victory point there. Go pack 40 up with the T70, saying some light damage there. You need also in a bit of a sticky situation. And there goes Sis3 penetrating the 222's armor. Not really a difficult task for the Sis3. The 222 was not particularly armored. Holding Ostro, many fortunes on the one there. You need to try and grab the southern victory point. You need to do anything to sort of stall the bleed there from Brostras. And if he's not going for the Puma, definitely needs to begin taking up and then getting up the Supermo Corps and begin pushing back with some armor versus Tiramisu. Panzer Gunnadiers would also still, I think, be a very welcome addition here to uh, Tiramisu's forces. 
A mortar, though, wouldn't hurt either to counter the opponent's mortar at the very least, and maybe also put some pressure on Brussels' infantry. Guns are being pushed back with the Oswald. It was reinforcing in the south, grabbing the mission point there, also holding up there in the just a slight issue that they actually can sort of grab the point with. Tinamisa continues his offensive as ordered by Sephira himself. Maybe. Maybe not. Comes the turn to the Ostrom across negative cover. We got the two minutes of support here. That should assist a bit. If Cat, you know, doesn't kill its own. We are not the enemy! We are sla Oh! That's why they're doing it. Comes that again, absolutely blasted with the pioneers in the 2 2 2. T7 seems to be nasty. Yeah, any tech out there for Brothers. That's unarguably a bit of a mistake there by Brothers, unless he's, I know, playing for a heavy tank corner, in which case he's going to go for the K1 on the IS2, that the IS2 is certainly further off. But a K1 would actually be pretty nasty for Tidemus to deal with considering the camp circumstances. But he is taking up, though, and he actually, I think, to get out at support with fast and nasty some armor faster than his opponent. Ooh, more to make critical errors there by Brothers, moving to the MP42's line of fire. Maximum on the way there for Brosa to help control his opponent's infantry. And there you go, Pat 40 punches through the frontal armor. Two to two, joining in. Ah, the Pat 40 was too slow. Didn't get the T70. Close, but uh, no snaps. Two to two, closing in on Vet C2. In the south, Pani's advancing in for the remaining day. He might want to consider slight repositioning the machine gun there from uh, being out of negative cover as a Palmer crop. He could actually go for a Panzer IV right away, and that would not be a bad choice overall. Though, considering how much manpower he's got floating about, I'd really urge a Panzer gun to do squad. Really urge it. Strongly recommend it. But there you go, Pani's caught with the T70. So, Palmer core halfway done. Mostly done actually. Big push in the north of the Ostrom Grenadiers. Two, two also spearing it. Got the pack force bomb. But there it goes straight into the Sys 3. Not working out. Pioneers wiped. Almost got the T 70 again. But once more, just beyond the reach of the T and the 7th Panzer Division. But again, spreading it aggressively. He could consider using some counter attack tactics, but allow him to just grab the territory faster once it's been rendered neutral. It's actually a surprisingly overlooked ability, but it can be quite useful. But there you go, Panzer on the way for Tidemus on the 7th Panzer Vision. But also there, the Shock Rifle is clearly playing for the Ice 2. Might go for the KV-8 first. We shall see. Still got plenty of manpower. Panzer going to this court would still be an excellent choice here for Tidemus. Again, I mean, his opponent is still largely relying on conscripts and Panzer going to do good work versus them. And could also help us the support weapon, so... I really, really, really urge your Panzer Grenadier squad, or at the very least a fuel cache, maybe, to just help with the fuel income. And I'm to push out more armor, and that way again in H versus Brosa, so again, that seemed to be bitten by a uh, rabbit Fuhrer, and it's now suffering from Fuhrer Syndrome. Still, he's getting most of the map there, he's got the Panzer for out here as well. Pin I'm seeing on the way there for the Panzer Kampfwagen 4. Achtung! Bros is there floating man puppet, so is Tiramisu, though neither player really should be doing it. Oh, he's going here for the Sis 3. He's going for Chanter to wipe it. Got it. Panther 4 moving ahead there. Constance recruiting it. Oh, crushing them. Almost wiping the entire Constance squad. Can this force retreat? No, enough. Infantry. <coughs> Hang on there. I should have drunk some more water before beginning that one. This is where a Pentagon of the Escort would have been really helpful. That would have been just amazing, clearing out all the supporting elements, allowing the Panzer IV to remain. I mean, this is kind of why you need the Panzer of these. They are probably sort of the really best offensive infantry the Wehrmacht has at the moment, and they are kind of needed to sort of keep, you know, any sort of offense like that going, keep clearing out sort of the vital targets like a Sys 3, in particular, they just recruited it. So, it really should go for some. Another option for Tidemus to consider now that he's actually got more map, he could consider some machine gun bunkers here and there. Of course, the KV-8 rather makes that a less amazing idea, but there you go, KV-8. The Soviet Dragon has arrived. Burning away at the Grenadiers, lighting trees on fire, snow on fire, Germans on fire. Pioneers versus comes from the south, not looking good there. But he's going to need a Stug to have a good chance versus that one. 
Segments is three there for Bro Stars. That's clearly stolen then for the eyes too. But right now though, Tiramisu does have the advantage of having both fuel points, which is good for him. Well, if you've been able to secure that field and getting rid of that T7 here in the center, that would have been a huge victory for Tidemi, so that would make the KV-8 a lot less amazing there for Brussels. So yeah, he should have gone for Panzer Grenadiers. Also moving ahead here, and moving away from there afterwards as they quickly find themselves that gun. Up north, hitting for the fuel point there, Panzer IV good to go, Austin M4-2. Pioneer sneaking about. We got some barbed wire here on the cover. They're not quite fully covering. Send the artillery barrage here as he makes for a push through the center. Nice to work, forcing the pack forward to pull back. We got the Stug here. The Panzer up north is setting up for something else wise. KV continues. Stug moving ahead there. There you go, Stu, pack 40 and the KV-8, taking some damage out on it. Almost down to half of the pack 40 they meet to get swiped. Gonna just can't quite off a of Panther first, I think. KV-8, they're suffering heavy damage. We've got a SIS-3 following up, preventing the Stu from pursuing. Nicely executed there by Brostas. Nicely executed as well. There you go, Panther first from the north, it seems, or at least briefly considered it. Austin can still grab the point here using counterattack tactics. In the south, they're going to do this the engineers. Staying out of heavy cover to have a better chance versus the flamethrower wheeling engineers. Very good work there. Panzer Force trying in. They need to be careful. We've got the MD4, we've got the Ostrom. If we can set up the MD4 2 within 10 gallon pits, we should have a good chance. So the promise right now, there's Panzer 4 there. Got with the answer tank. Oh, oh, the MD4 2 is not setting up. It's getting too close. Oh dear, wasn't paying attention. Ostrom, MD4 2. Stuke moving in there. Panzer 4 was heavily damaged. MD4 2 is way too close. It's going to get burned up immediately. Ostrom missed up. Precious moments. Is Gun down the field gun crews. Oh, this is turning into a horrid engagement there for Tidemi. So a horrid engagement. His machine gun got wiped. He hasn't gotten a single field gun out there. Panther first off. Stoop driving around willy nilly. Again, this is where Panzer gun has been quite helpful in clearing out the field guns rapidly. Tickle with a good bundle grenade. Got one of them. Got the other one with the Pioneers, but both Duke and Panzer IV knockout damage in the KV-8 and the T-70 sitting about there. Didn't get it. KV-8 with 45 minute rounds. Almost got the mortar, but didn't. More Ostrom called in. Both his machine guns probably have been lost here. Field gun recruit. Oh, uh, this just continues to get worse and worse. And there you go, the Panzer IV went down to just anti-tank grenades. Oh, uh, this is a complete disaster there for Tiramisu. I mean, he got some damage on the promise. He lost so much more, including both his machine guns. His Panzer IV and his Stu. This is really bad for Tiramisu. Really bad. That is catastrophic to put it mildly. A crushing blow to Tilamusa's forces. Leaving his forces severely gutted while Brussels' forces are largely intact. In fact, now being supplemented by at least an MG42. I mean, Tiramisu still got most of the map of the promise. Bros is getting increasingly close to the IS-2, and now Tiramisu has got no armor. And meanwhile, to the build up, this has something to resist the IS-2 with, and again, his ability to resist the country all the support weapons is also diminished. So, plus, of course, the IS-2 also will have two field guns supporting it, and he's lost his pack. Forty silver has not been recruited. So this is looking uh, not good for Tiramisu. That was a really bad engagement. We should all just have the MG42's attack move, that would basically have them set up on max range, so they just fire that way, that's actually what I do in those circumstances, to avoid them just walking straight into the field and getting themselves killed like that. He would probably have to get some shots there on the field guns, particularly with incendiary arm piercing rounds, he would probably have to do a lot of damage to the field guns quickly, clearing them out, and then making it easy for the tanks to fight about there, so... That's at least what I tried to do, though. Who knows, might not have fared any better than Tiramisu there in the end. Stug on the way there for Tiramisu, but... It's going to be severely outgunned, in particular once the IS-2 arrives. He's going to be in a very sticky situation here versus Bursas. Panzerfaust and the T-70 light tank. 
Pack for recruit, Stug arriving. Losing the northern victory point, losing the northern fuel point. Cut off point there, so he's also lost access to the southern resources. Very grim stuff there for Tiramisu. Very grim stuff. And he seems to be pushing northwards. He's not going to try and attack into the south. He's anticipating this is where Brosas is going to be putting most of his weight. He's going to try and to the north and that way sort of break through there. Which is definitely an interesting decision there by um, Tiramisu. An interesting decision. Not necessarily bad. But it's definitely not what most players would have done. And considering we have sort of got more map sort of vision here than him, you can also see it's probably not the most best one, but like I can't fault the logic from it. Because in most situations that actually been the optimal move. Because again, normally that be the south would be the more contested because that's where his opponents are putting all the resources. I mean the south would be or north would be more uh, easily taken. In this case there's actually a machine gun out there. But still, oh he might finally get the T70. Small victory there, a very small victory for Tiramisu. If only can again that gone that one much much sooner. Sadly he did not. Now the south is largely Russian. Gonna be suppressed, or some supporting he's trying to support here. But also has his moments away from calling in the eyes too. The Yosef Stalin two tank. Maximum they're being flanked with the Pioneers as they're going to destroy the fire. Very good work there. So Tiramisu trying his best to restore the situation despite having to suffer the quite frankly critical losses. He's going to need a second Stuka to have a chance versus the Eyes too. Which has now arrived here for Brosvas and the third tank core. The Yosef Stalin 2 tank. The Yosef Stalin 1 on IS-1 never really saw action. There might be some slight testing here and there, but overall it never saw mass production. It was in many ways very similar though to the KV-85 tank, which actually saw some usage. Basically both had an 85mm gun and roughly the same armor, or to roughly the same turret. But I imagine there were some uh, change between the K1 and the I 85 and the IS-1. But still a few fun facts there. And apart from your surprise, they never added in the KV-85 to the game though. There would have been a nice, I think, intermediary heavy tank between the K1 and the IS-2 tank for the rations. And which did see fight war usage over up to the end of the war. Austin, they're pushing back the conscripts. Second shoot on the way there for Tiramisu is making some decent progress there versus Blosras, but the situation is particularly dire. Even if he's sort of recovering after again that very bad engagement here in the center of the map again. There's no way to describe it, but really, really bad. He got he ball. He's using ambush tactics on his field guns. It's actually very interesting. I mean, most players never use the ambush tactic on the field gun, but Bruce there was up to it. Saying Stuga almost done. Of course, the problem is going to be those field guns. And either more to see a punch going to be a very sort of helpful choice in dealing with them. <coughs> Sadly, he has got none of those. I two, they're running back. Disca firing. Fun fact so only so heavy tanks really saw a usage of pendulum machine guns. As only with the T 55, the so medium tanks began seeing them as well. <coughs> MB42 current center, make it very hard there for Tiramis to push through without artillery support, which he lacks. H2 is going to be able to get annihilated by the eyes too. <coughs> Southern point secured. Awesome as engineers, can't the holding out there. I mean, overall, Bros has been making angles. Ah, oh, he's booby trapped the southern victory point with a demo charge. Sneaky. It looks like, yeah, that's actually wasn't looking, but clearly he looked and uh, 
Pop goes the weasel along with the Ostrobin. So right now Tidemisu is in a uh, front flip carry state. He needs to somehow separate the eyes too from the field guns of course with ambush attacks it's going to be difficult to tell where the field guns are for Brosos or Tidemisu but if he can somehow isolate and then sort of destroy it with the pack forward in the Stooks he might have a chance though he really should get some Panzer gun that he is. Going for a mortar finder though, that's also going to be helpful though again, could have been going for a lot sooner. Point there secured, more sandbags from Borsas, he's of course just digging in there, right by the finish line, making it harder here for Tinamitsu to rush in. He's being ready for another push into the north again, he's not just trying to bash his <coughs> head into a wall there, very good work. Roughness in this case failed to make an impact. KV8 number 2 there for Brosas. Counting them out in the south. Field gun trash Norfolk. Molotov's off there against the Gunners. They get bunched up. Molotov on the Maxim. So again, we finally got some artillery out there for Tiramiso. Third still got from him. He knows he has to deal with the uh, armor there. Then Ospin would not be a bad choice. Now he's got two shoes out just up with the infantry. Maybe have a chance of dealing with the field guns if he can flank them with it. The Ospin tends to be pretty good at that, actually. Reasonably good. Okay, we're moving ahead. Needs to be careful, doesn't it? Ah, he's going to move straight in front of the field guns there. There you go. Almost taking out the Stukes. Almost got the KD1 there. Almost, but not quite. Second Stuke also takes a full volley there. Salvo almost knocking out the Stuke. Ice 2 on the move here for Broslas. And in the south, we got Ostrom trying to attack, but again, they are not assault infantry and they never will be. There's the great flaw of the Ostrom. Oh, the Stukes are moving in, getting ambushed here by the Ice 2. Got the pack for this bomb. We got incendiary badges down here on the machine gun position. Comes being pinned down. Stoop down. Stoop down. I don't think he's paying attention to them. And machine gun got wiped as well here. Looks like Brosa or Tiramisu got overwhelmed here. Lost control of the situation. Well, further. And lost the Stoop and an MG 42. Down to 47 points here versus Brosa. So it's at 461. Oh dear, that might have been a misclick, a pathing error, whatever. Either way, GG here, a loss for Tiramisu and the 7th Panzer be shown. Destroyed here by Brosas and the 3rd Tank in a brutal battle on Holot Inferno Winter. Certainly high in the power potency of just a heavy conscript build with a few supporting weapons. And of course the power of the field guns and other bits, but also just flanking. I mean, Tiramisu did a lot of good things. The problem was his force composition, though, was never quite geared for it. Again, he lacked a mortar, which really would have helped, I think, early on. Even two mortars would be great. But also Panzer gun at least. He relied too much on the Ostrom. In a situation where he didn't need Ostrom as much, he needed Panzer guns. He needed some offensive infantry to begin pushing through. And the problem is the Ostrom are not offensive infantry. The defensive infantry, you grab points, you help hold them cost efficiently with the Ostrom, but they can't attack position. In many cases, he benefited a lot from a Pentagon to squad two to quickly clear up Brosa's support weapons. I mean, had he had two Pentagon to squad instead of some of those Ostrom, I think uh, Tidemisa would have been a much better position here versus Brosa's. And as I also the argument could be made if he'd just gone for a Puma fast and knocked out the T-70, could also gain better map control versus Brosa's and maybe you know, other things sting less. So there's a lot of considerations there for Tidemisa here, how he could have done things better. But also that engagement in the center there with the tank and the Stug and everything else was just a complete disaster. I think ultimately, I'm not I'm sure I'm wrong there, but that one really just sort of cost them the game. It's actually sort of on the way back. But so there are a lot of things they could have done better, to be honest. That's what Brosas playing for the Ice 2, they even calling him it was a bit risky. Had Tiramisa played differently, he would have been in a much stickier situation and could easily have lost the game. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, want to subscribe to the friends, share it with everyone. If not, send in a replay of your own. Apply some feedback in the comment section. If you like what I do, do consider donating or pledging on Patreon. Links are in the video description. And this is Imperial Linking. Cheers. Thank you all for watching. Hope to see you all tomorrow for another sounding episode. Bye.